Hi everybody, my name is Sora and I'm super excited to be showing you how I cook veganized Korean food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Hi, I'm Kanchan. Today I'm going to show you a vegan day inspired by my childhood in India. Hi, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to show you how to veganize an American breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For breakfast, I made yachujuk, which is Korean vegetable porridge. First, I started off by putting the pan on medium heat while spreading some sesame oil around, then added some minced garlic and mixed that in with the oil. And then I added diced carrots and some onions. Next, I added a cup of rice and mixed everything together with my wooden spoon. And then I poured in a generous amount of water into the pan and stirred it around evenly for a few minutes and added more later. Once the water was boiling, I added in more veggies like chopped zucchini and some chopped mushroom, then added the rest of the water. I kept stirring everything around until a lot of the water eventually evaporated. Of course, it's important to season with some salt and some sesame seeds for that extra flavor. And finally, you're gonna wanna scoop up this beautiful porridge into a bowl. I'm salivating as I'm watching myself make this. So I really love garnishing this dish with seasoned seaweed for that extra saltiness. Also, I'm a big believer in sesame seeds, so I like to add more after. Personally, I prefer eating warm, easy food in the mornings, so I really enjoy eating yachujuk to start my day. For breakfast, I made a spiced or masala chickpea frittata, which is basically a vegan version of the spiced up omelet I grew up eating in India as a kid. You simply combine a cup of chickpea flour with a cup of water, salt and turmeric, a little bit of oil, and whisk that up until smooth. We start by heating oil in a pan to which we add our sliced shallots or onions. This is gonna give a really nice complex caramelized base. Then we go in with our spices, turmeric, cumin, coriander, great for gut health, great anti-inflammatory spices. Then we add our chopped tomatoes, cook them down, and to that we add our chickpea batter. We add our greens. I'm using a mixture of baby spinach and power greens. You can use any greens you like. You can chop up greens. You can use other vegetables. The sky is the limit. Once the frittata has set a little bit in the stove, we finish it under the broiler in the oven until it's nice and crisp on top. Finish it with a spiced yogurt and add more spices on top for digestion boosting goodness and all the flavor. Yes, I like red chili and some heat for breakfast. Yes, I do. You can take a girl out of India, but you can't take India out of the girl. I'm gonna finish that with chopped avocado and breakfast is served. In India, it is very common to have a savory breakfast and eggs are often cooked with spices and aromatics. This takes me back straight to my childhood, entirely vegan, all the deliciousness, all the love, all the food memories. For breakfast, I made some cheesy vegan grits. First, I added some water, non-dairy milk, and a pinch of salt to a small saucepan and brought that to a boil. I like to use some milk when I'm making my grits because it will make them extra creamy. Then I added in some regular corn grits and kept stirring them continuously so no lumps would form. To give the grits some cheesy flavor and for some extra vitamins and protein, I stirred in some nutritional yeast. Then I added on a big slice of vegan butter. And if you wanna get a little extra crazy, you can sprinkle on some vegan cheese as well. I'm not from the South, so I didn't grow up eating grits on a regular basis. My mom used to make me cream of wheat a lot, but I like how grits are a gluten-free alternative and they're one of my favorite things to make now. For lunch, I made pibinguksu, which is a popular Korean spicy cold noodle dish. So I started off by preparing the sauce for the noodles by adding in gochujang, which is a Korean red chili paste, some vinegar, Korean red chili flakes, sesame seeds, sugar, and some sesame oil, and then I mixed it all together. Next, you're gonna wanna add in noodles to boiling hot water and let them cook for a few minutes until the noodles are tender. And then you're gonna wanna give the hot noodles a really cold shower and drain and rinse them a few times. Also, this is a really crucial step that will keep your noodles super chewy, which is my favorite part. After that, you're gonna add the noodles to a mixing bowl to mix everything together with your gloves. I added in chopped cucumbers, cabbage, and the sauce that I made earlier, and then mixed it all together. Pibinguksu literally translates to mixed noodles, and as the name implies, a lot of mixing is involved in this recipe. And this dish wouldn't be complete without a few more toppings, so I topped it with some chopped kimchi, which is a staple in Korean cuisine, and some crispy seaweed, as well as more sesame seeds. Pibinguksu is my go-to meal for the summer because it's cold and satisfies all my cravings for spicy food. You really can't go wrong with this dish. 
For lunch, I made dal palak with quinoa and a simple side salad. To make the dal, we heat some oil in a pot and add cumin seeds, red chilies, and hing, which is an incredible digestion boosting spice. Then we add turmeric, our soaked red lentils, water, and we allow it to cook until softened, adding more water if the mixture starts to dry out. While the lentils cook, we make our palak or spinach by heating oil in a pan, adding cumin seeds, allowing them to sizzle, and then adding our sliced onions. I like to add salt to the onions to help soften them more quickly and also to add flavor as I cook the dish. Garlic and ginger saute for a minute until just fragrant, and then we're going in with turmeric, cumin, coriander, and red chili. You'll see that these four spices are pretty common in many Indian dishes. Then I add crushed tomatoes and cook this for about five to eight minutes until really concentrated and flavorful, bringing out those umami notes in the tomato. Then we're adding our spinach. If you've ever cooked with spinach, you know that it cooks down to almost nothing. So more is more in this dish, especially when we're talking about fiber, nutrient-dense greens. Once the spinach and lentils are cooked separately, we simply combine them into this pot of dreamy, creamy deliciousness. To make the simple side salad, I'm just going to combine sliced cucumbers and cherry tomatoes with lime juice, salt, chaat masala, which you can find at any Indian grocery store, and freshly chopped cilantro. To plate the dish, I'm going to add some cooked quinoa, top it with the dal palak, finish that with cumin, coriander, red chili powder, you know the drill, fresh cilantro, and that vibrant, simple side salad for a little crunch and plant-based goodness. Almost every meal I grew up eating in India had some sort of lentil and some sort of spiced leafy greens. And this dish combines both of those. It's packed with nutrients, it's packed with flavor, it's packed with fiber, on and on. It is really, in my opinion, the perfect lunch. For lunch, I made some New England style vegan clam chowder. For an alternative to clams, I used some oyster mushrooms, which I sauteed up in some oil until they were lightly browned. The oyster mushrooms worked so well as an alternative to clams because they replicated that chewy texture really well. Then I added in some vegan butter, chopped onions and carrots, this recipe also calls for celery, but you know I left it out because I hate celery, minced garlic, some capers for a briny seafood flavor, some Old Bay seasoning, dried thyme, salt, and pepper, and sauteed that up until everything was softened and fragrant. Then I deglazed the pan with some white wine and let that reduce by about half before I added in some all-purpose flour and stirred it up for a couple of minutes. To replicate the creaminess of the chowder, I added in some canned coconut milk. And once you add in all of the other ingredients, you can't even taste the coconut flavor. Then I added in two bay leaves and set it to the side to let it simmer. For more creaminess, I added some soaked cashews, vegetable broth, miso, some brine from the capers, soy sauce, and lemon juice, and blended that all up until it was really smooth and let it cook for about seven to eight minutes until it was thickened. Then I added in some cooked potatoes and sprinkled in some kelp granules to give it a seafood flavor. Then I covered the pot, turned the heat off, and let it sit for about 20 minutes. While the soup was sitting, I started on my shiitake bacon for a topping. I added some soy sauce, apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, and smoked paprika to a bowl and stirred it up. Then I added some sliced shiitake mushrooms to a pan with oil and cooked them until they were crispy, flipping them halfway through. Then I added in my marinade and let it thicken up. I usually bake my shiitake mushroom bacon, but this is a quicker way to do it. Growing up in New England, I used to love clam chowder and I haven't had it in years, but this recipe was so similar to the real thing. And if you're missing clam chowder, you have to try it. For dinner, I made pasta chongor, also known as Korean mushroom hot pot. What I love about this dish is that it's meant to be shared at the table so everyone can enjoy it together. So I began by adding together gochugaru, which is Korean red chili flakes, a bit of soy sauce, some cooking wine, minced garlic, we love garlic, pepper, and some salt. And then I mixed everything together to make a paste and I set this aside. Next, I made the vegetable broth by adding water to a pan on high heat, then added dried seaweed, radish, dried mushrooms, and slices of onion. I stirred the veggies around while the stock was simmering and eventually created this earthy veggie broth for about 10 minutes. I know a lot of people tend to think of Korean barbecue when it comes to Korean food, but traditional Korean food is actually very plant-based or easy to veganize. 
While my broth is simmering, I usually prepare the rest of my ingredients for the hot pot to save time by cutting up the veggies and tofu so that they are ready for the next step. Then I prepared a shallow pot and arranged a variety of mushrooms, scallion, cabbage, watercress, slices of tofu, and added the spicy paste that I made previously. And then I poured the vegetable stock into the pan and mixed some of the paste with the stock. I waited until it came to a boil and let it simmer for a few more minutes. And now it's time to eat. Before Koreans eat their meal, we say Charmokesamida, which is a polite way of saying I will eat well. So I added a few more Korean side dishes to my meal here, like Kungnamur Muchim, which is a soybean sprout dish. And of course we have some lovely kimchi as well as some rice to enjoy with the hot pot. For dinner, I made a vegan version of the all-time Indian classic Mutter Paneer. This is light, it's delicious and packed with flavor. I like to drain the excess moisture from my firm tofu by placing a kitchen towel on top and a heavy skillet. Then I slice it into cubes. I'm taking an easy, potentially lazy weeknight approach to this dish by combining chopped red onions, garlic and ginger in an oven proof dish with crushed tomatoes and my spices, turmeric, cumin, coriander, red chili powder and garam masala, salt and lots of freshly cracked black pepper. Avocado oil, which is my favorite oil for high heat cooking, that chopped tofu, mushrooms and frozen peas. Toss this together and stick it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. How easy is that? Don't tell my mom, she'll be appalled, but it's absolutely delicious, I promise. While this cooks in the oven, we're making our cashew cream. Now, most matar paneer has tons of heavy cream, which is super heavy. We're taking this in a plant-based lighter direction with cashew cream, which is so easy to make. We simply soak cashews with hot water and blend it until smooth. Then we're gonna stir that into the cooked dish and finish cooking it in the oven for about 10 more minutes. We finish this with fresh cilantro, all the spices, cumin, coriander, garam masala, red chili powder. I love finishing a dish with more of the spices that I've used while cooking it to reinforce the flavors and also to add extra health benefits. I like to serve this alongside a whole wheat naan with garlic pickle. This takes me straight back to my favorite Indian restaurants as a kid. It's lighter, it's brighter, it's fresher, it's better for you, it's packed with flavor. I love it. For dinner, I made a meatloaf with impossible meat. First, I added some oil to a pan and sauteed up some onions until they were almost translucent. Then I added in some garlic, tomato paste, vegan Worcestershire sauce, definitely saying that wrong, and some salt, and cooked it for a few more minutes until it was fragrant. Then I transferred that to a bowl and added in two packets of impossible meat. Then I added in a flax egg, some fresh chopped parsley, breadcrumbs, vegetable broth, salt and pepper, and I just got in there with my hands and mixed it up until everything was really well combined. Then for my glaze, I added some ketchup, Dijon mustard, and brown sugar to a bowl and mixed it up until it was well combined. Then I transferred my meatloaf into a loaf pan. It's crazy how much this looks like meat. And I spread on my glaze, which looks so good. Then I baked it for 50 minutes at 350. I'm Polish and Italian, so I didn't used to eat a ton of meatloaf growing up, but my mom definitely made it sometimes. And this veganized version really brought me back to my childhood. 